these are our electricity sources uh, this year, um, second quarter. Um, we can see nuclear is about 18%, gas is 28%, renewables about 15%, coal still coal 35%. This is where we get our electricity from. If you look at it over the last four years, we can see, first of all, it's going down. Despite the fact that in 2011 it said it was going to go up, but it's actually going down. And um, it's, it's a bit difficult to see, but what's happening with renewables is uh, compared with the second quarter in 2012, it's going up. And you see nuclear is slept going down. And um, uh, coal is a red one, it's going down. So uh, <coughs> nuclear and coal are going down, renewables and gas are, uh, certainly renewables going up, and gas about the same. This is uh, renewable energy capacity in the States, and in Britain, sorry. Um, uh, by year, and you can see it's going up. And in fact, 2000, up, I haven't got the data here, but uh, it's up here for 2013 already, and we're not finished 2013. Yet. And these are all the various sources. You can see that it's, um, there are a lot of inputs here. Biomass, municipal incineration, land landfill, solar PV, wave, tidal, offshore, onshore wind. In other words, this is a, a good thing about security. You're not relying on one thing. When a nuclear power station goes down, bingo, 1.2 gigawatts, right offline. Hey, that's serious. Whereas with any of these fail, it doesn't matter so much. And that security is really important. With diversity, you've got flexibility. Um, this is a wind farm growth in the UK, uh, mostly offshore um, to 2012. And 2013 is up here. As you can see, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, growth in the offshore uh, coming along just in, in recent years. Onshore growth has been has, has increased. And in fact, um, the UK is world leader in offshore wind development. But uh, that hides a lot of things. The amount of uh, potential for renewable I'm talking about wind and wave now, offshore, onshore, wind and wave in the UK. Um, compared with the potential, say, in Germany, well, in Europe, within Europe, UK has the largest potential of any country in Europe, by far, because we've got the longest coastline. We're an island and stuck in the middle, just offshore Atlantic. Um, Germany has only got a little, little bit of coastline on the North Sea and a little, little bit at Baltic Sea. And there's not much wind on the Baltics. Germany has got the lowest potential for renewable energy. Uh, what happens with actual capacity is the other way around. Germany has got the highest, and the UK has got almost the lowest. That shows you, and the, diff the reason for it? Politics. I mean, you can't say both of them are rational, it's just basically down to choices. And it was so which direction should we go? Well, globally, in the last decade, we've seen 30 gigawatts. Uh, nuclear power station conventionally, if certainly for PWRs, is one gigawatt. So there's 30 nuclear power stations closed in the last 10 years, whereas there's 80 gigawatts wind and 80 gigawatts solar, solar thermal, has been installed. There was 30 closed, 160 opened up. Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Japan, all actually from nuclear, Germany now has an excess of uh, 30 gigawatts wind capacity. Uh, Germany and uh, Denmark, over 30% of its electricity for wind, and has no nuclear power. So there are there's clearly a big divide going on between us, well, the government, which currently uh, is an administration right now in Britain, and what's happening in Germany. Big, big uh, policy divide. Here we go for renewable energy use and targets. This is 2010, which is slightly out of date, but the trouble is I, I've not been able to find any data. Well, these figures have all increased, but their ratios, their ranking has stayed the same. For example, say Sweden, it gets 46, 47% of its electricity, of its energy, energy, not electricity, energy, from renewable sources, 47%. It's got a target for half. Denmark is 40, it's, tar it's, already, it's already exceeded its 2020 target. Um, of the country Germany, 25% of its uh, energy is renewable, 
um, and its target, it's already met its target for 2010. Um, uh, UK is down to 3.8 percent, again it's 2010, and it used to be 15, but the government has just removed it, so there's, we don't have a target anymore. Um, we're, we're better than Malta though, which is fascinating. This is global now. Um, this is the source. Uh, China has got 75 gigawatts. Remember, a gigawatt is a big nuclear power station. Um, US 60, Germany 31, and UK 8. This is 2013. Um, this figure from, I've got a star here because um, I don't trust that figure. I think it's probably more like 8. Which is really amazing. Is India has got 18 gigawatts for India. Amazing. amazing. Look at Spain, 23. Wow. Nuclear power. Um, here's some questions that I think we should all try and ask ourselves. Does nuclear provide an answer for CO2 emissions? Is it a, is it a good policy to adopt? Most people, uh, certainly in the UK, a half or so, think that nuclear power is the wonderful answer for, nuclear, for, for global warming. Well, let me tell you right now, it ain't. And I know about it. I've studied it quite uh, deeply, and it will come to it in a minute. Well, the problem is there are problems with uh, big disasters also behind cross of nuclear and I'm, I'm also going to discuss very briefly the proposed agreement that just was last week between Britain, British government and EDF and the Chinese government ah, where we're going to give shovelful loads of money to the French treasury and we're going to invite the Chinese in to uh, control our nuclear power stations. What? This is crazy policy and yet apparently we're going to do it. Unbelievable. Okay, first of all, a cost-effective way to reduce CO2 emissions the Sustainable Development Commission, um, back in 2005, by the way, the first thing that you, the uh, coalition government did was to abolish the Sustainable Development Commission. Good guys, mm -hmm. eh? Um, they had a report in March 2006 <coughs> on the nuclear power and low carbon. It's estimated that if you had a 10 gigawatt, that's 10 nuclear power stations, nuclear program, it would displace 4 to 8% of the CO2 emissions from 1990. Big deal at 8, okay? But if you only build one station, and that's what happened with Hinkley, about 1 to 2%. They concluded that nuclear power is not the answer to tackling climate change. These, these are the guys, you know, set up a specialist look at this, and that's what they said. And you hear so well. Most people think that electricity generation is a big source of carbon dioxide. It is not. Um, guess what the biggest sources of carbon dioxide are? So, come on. Heating. Homes. Heating the home. Cars. We are, and I've just bought myself a car. You know, I've got some friends of, uh, who are, uh, let's say, energy people. They think we've, we've lost the global warming race. When China is building a coal fire station every week, it's dispiriting. So the best thing to do is go out and get a huge big BMW and just drive around. I mean, who cares? I don't take that view, but uh, some people say that. <coughs> Can't you see 16 million one pop? Ah, 16 million. That's one and a half times the cost of last year's Olympic Games. And that's the supply, what, um, about 2% of uh, UK electricity. That's about 100 times um, <laughs> uh, per watt uh, higher than gas powered equipment. That's the thing is that it, um, to build these power, these monsters, um, you have, must have huge government subsidies and insurance guarantees, R&D support, and market interventions. And yet, and yet the government says, oh, no, there won't be any subsidies. Well, oh, pack of lies. That's all it is, nuclear power. It's a huge subsidy. <coughs> Treasury had to guarantee to EDF uh, uh, 10 billion pounds to build a power station. 10 billion. Um, this is despite the fact that around the rest of the world, nuclear is in full-scale retreat. And these are a list of pullouts, nuclear pullouts, closures, and withdrawals in the last couple of years. Um, uh, these are the shutting downs, um, as we can see here. Um, the yellow ones are the UK. And these are all the companies that are pulled out of various nuclear projects. Just looked at newspaper reports and called them all together. And this shows you, this is only partial, I mean, there's a much longer list than this, but these are the big ones. 
Let me point one, a couple of uh, ones. This is September 2011. Siemens in Germany, a big multinational corporation, engineering company, quit the nuclear industry. Siemens was very big in nuclear, very big. And it's quit the nuclear industry. It's oh, amazing. And there's a number of governments have said no, like the provincial government of Ontario, the Bulgarian parliament, Polish government, uh, Quebec government, uh, Swiss government, German government, Italian government, they've all pulled out of nuclear. And yet, here we go, we are, Britain, nuclear, full speed ahead. I wonder, do they know anything that we don't know? Okay, nuclear generating costs are very, very, very high. They're higher than all the renewables. And uh, the recent uh, uh, plan uh, deal between the EDF and the UK government was, uh, was, was been universally panned. Um, these are, this is ARENA, the uh, International Renewable Energy uh, Agency. It's the equivalent of IAEA, but for renewable energy. And these are the costs for, uh, their figures for costs. And you compare that per megawatt hour, compare that with all the others. We're paying £92.50. And all the, it's much cheaper for all the others compared to generating costs uh, for a kilowatt hour. This is uh, Emory 11, and you can see this is uh, nuclear, and these are all the others. Sorry, I just don't have time to go for all that. These are the criticisms of the Hinkley deal. This is Lord Lawson, the former chance Tory Chancellor, who said that um, he, the, the Energy Secretary had that he, uh, take the British government for a ride over the ludicrously high subsidy deal. Um, financial uh, analysts. They were flabbergasted. We were frankly staggered that Hinkley will be the most expensive publication <laughs> in the world. Yeah, the Guardian columnist here. We could be staring at a truly astronomical cost. The government surely can't be that dumb. Or Carol Lucas, the best MP there is by far. She said, when city analysts tell you the contract is economically insane, it's time to admit you got it wrong. Claudia Roth, uh, she's the deputy speaker of the German Parliament. She said, the Brits are crazy. How can one build into power thing when the world understood that Fukushima is no exception but part of the industry? The real question is this. For those people here who think that nuclear is a good answer to global warming, the question in your mind is, how efficient is it in reducing CO2, right? Bang per buck. How much money do you have to spend to get CO2 down, right? And so this is CO2 saved per dollar invested. This is in Henry Levins. Hey, you can see here, this is nuclear, and all the rest are up here. The key thing is that if you look up to the future, and this is what we should be doing, um, and looking at prices, this is photovoltaic costs per kilowatt hour, and this is nuclear costs. <laughs> but guess what, where we're going? Mm -hmm. uh, these are the increasing costs of uh, for kilowatt construction costs. These are the, all the renewables going down. And the comparison, well, we can write this as well as I do. What about um, Wilbur's promise to freeze energy prices? Is it, is it possible? Is it on? Well, the, last year the profits of the big six were 3.4 billion, up three quarters in the last three years. There's the reference. And gas prices are to increase about 10%, but wholesale prices will increase about 1.6%. <laughs> Even John Major said there should be a windfall tax on, on the big pictures. Conclusions. I was asked, uh, is our energy policy, our, the British government's energy policy, sustainable and secure? I had another one saying. Because <laughs> quite frankly, I don't think it is. Um, can we look at these? Well, the first thing is that nuclear doesn't really, isn't really a very good answer to, to uh, CO2 reduction. If we're really serious about getting to grips with CO2 reduction, we look at elsewhere. Uh, there are cheaper, more cost-effective, quicker and safer options by far. And these are renewables and energy efficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, do we want a radioactive future or do we want a renewable future? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.